Hello traders, it's Sunday, September 3rd, just shy of 1 a.m. on the East Coast here. As we delve into the world of gold, buckle up for an exciting ride today. Two weeks ago, my analysis fell short of accuracy and gold did everything opposite to my analysis resulting in my position being stopped out. However, I'm pleased to share that last week my analysis hit the mark spot on. So let's see how we are going to do this week. As usual, we start with notes from past week, Tuesday. The jolt numbers declined by 338,000 from the previous months to 8.8 .8 million in July 23, marking the lowest level since March 2021 and falling below the market consensus of 9.5 million. It also represented the third consecutive month of decline in job openings, indicating that the labor market is gradually slowing after months of unprecedented monetary policy tightening by the Fed. And on Wednesday, United States ADP employment change, private businesses in the U.S. hired 177,000 in August 2023, and this was the least in five months, missing market expectations of 195,000. And the United States GDP grew at an annualized rate of 2.1% in the second quarter of 2023, compared to preliminary figure of 24 and the first quarter's expansion of 2%. On Thursday, United States core PCE price index month over month which exclude food and energy increased by 0.2% in July 23, maintaining the same pace as in June and aligning with market expectations. The annual rate regarded as the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation, this is the favorite indicator, so a slight rise as anticipated reaching 4.2% from June's 4.1%. The United States initial jobless claims, the number of Americans fighting for unemployment benefits, edged down by 4,000 from the prior week's upwardly revised value of 228,000. On Friday, the United States non-farm payroll. The figures came stronger than expected. The U.S. economy added 187,000 jobs in August, compared to the downwardly revised 157,000 in July and more than market expectations of 170,000. Still, it was the third consecutive months with job gains falling below the 200,000 threshold, indicating a gradual easing of labor market conditions largely attributed to the Federal Reserve's significant interest rate hikes aimed at cooling down inflation. The unemployment rate unexpectedly rose to 3.8% from market expectations of 3.5%. United States our average hourly earnings month over month rose by 8% or 0.2% to 33 cents or 0.2% to 33.82 in August, after 0.4% advance in the prior month, and below market estimates of 0.3%. The average 
hourly earnings year over year increased by 4.3% from a year ago following a 4.4 rise in the prior month and slightly below market estimates of 4.4%. The participation rates rose by 62.8% in August and this is the highest since February 2020 when the pandemic started to hit. From fundamental analysis perspective, turning our attention to the realm of inflation, the PCE core figures indicate a modest uptick. In summary, it's reasonable to conclude that inflation remains manageable, with approximately three weeks remaining until the upcoming Federal Reserve meeting i anticipate that the fed will maintain its current interest rates and convey a stance that is not excessively hawkish suggesting flexibility in their approach for subsequent meetings regarding the 20th of september the likelihood of no change in interest rate has risen to 94 percent compared to 80% the previous week and 90% the week before. Meanwhile, the probability of a rate hike in November now stands at 33.5%. It's worth noting, like I mentioned in my last week's uh, video, that Chairman Powell hinted at the possibility of the Fed keeping a rate steady during the next meeting in September. <clears throat> this is the updated interest rates probability and you can get it from the cmegroup.com website and search for Fed Watch tool. You can see the 94% and 64.6% at no change in November which means 33.5% of a possibility, probability of uh, 0.25 rate hike in November. The USD outlook, the USD began the week on a downward trajectory experiencing a three-day consecutive decline from 104.2 to 102.94. However, it found support at the 20 days moving average, which was at 103.1. This support was reinforced by favorable PCE figures and positive NFP headlines propelling the USD on an upward trajectory, ultimately closing the week at 104.3 matching Friday's high, which in my opinion, this is bullish. We'll see uh, different bullish points for the USD and bearish uh, points for uh, gold, but let's take it step by step. Analyzing the technical aspects, it's evident that the USD remains in an overbought condition. When observing the daily charts, indicating a potential correction might be on the horizon. However, it's worth noting that the SMIO, Statistic Momentum, Momentum Index Oscillator, is nearing a point where it could cross the zero line here at the red arrow at the bottom of the screen. This suggests that the bullish sentiment might gain strength soon. If this scenario materializes, we could witness the USD testing the 106 mark, and this would put a great deal of pressure on gold. Now, gold, after a period of USD weakness earlier in the week, the bullish momentum gained sufficient strength to break through the persistent resistance at 1920. This resulted in a rally for gold, pushing its price from 1912 to 1949. However, the effort to sustain this level faced 
challenges on Thursday, primarily due to the resurgence of USD strength. And the final attempt to maintain the 1950 level was thwarted by the bears, leading to the formation of a bearish shooting star bar on Friday. You see the shooting star? Indicating a potential shift in sentiment and a possible reversal in gold's price trend. A quick note about the shooting star pattern for those who don't know what, what that is. It's often seen as a potential reversal signal, especially when it appears after a strong upward strong uptrend. It suggests that while buyers initially put the price higher, sellers later came in force causing the price to retreat and potentially signaling a shift in market sentiment from bullish to bearish. However, this is important, like all candlestick patterns, it's important to consider it in the context of the overall market condition and other technical indicators for a more accurate analysis. But bottom line, if I'm concerned, this is bearish for me. From technical analysis perspective, indeed the recent strength exhibited by the USD on Thursday and Friday posed a challenge to gold's upward momentum. And when we examine the weekly chart, we can observe that gold struggled to sustain its position above the 20 week moving average, which was at 1952, the blue line. Despite this struggle, it managed to close the week in positive territory, showing a gain of 1.3%. This is on the weekly chart, because on the daily chart, it's the opposite. Examining the daily chart reveals a different narrative. Here it's evident that the bulls encountered a clear obstacle, now as the 100 day moving average, resistance level which was situated at 1954. So the 100 days moving average at 1954 and the 20 week moving average at 1952 they couldn't breach these levels. The inability to breach the 100 day moving average resistance suggests that there is substanti substantial selling pressure in this zone. This resistance level should be closely monitored as a breakout above it could signal a new bullish momentum. So I'll keep an eye on this level guys because this this could mean a reversal in 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 market sentiment and it could push gold towards 1980 and maybe the 2000 mark while a continued failure to surpass it may indicate further consolidation or a bearish reversal i'll i'll talk about the macd here at uh, later on the video. Looking at supports and resistances, this is the Bollinger Bands, the upper band is at 1949 and the lower at 1880. And we are close to the upper band and this again could act as resistance. The orange line is the 20 days moving average. Gold resistances, we have the 1949.75, the Bollinger Bands upper band, the 1952, the 20 weeks moving average. Let's try to, so you can see them in, uh, in one screen as much as possible. The 1949.75, the Bollinger Band upper band, the 1952, the 20 weeks moving average. 1954, the 100 days moving average. 1972, July 31st high. 1981, the channel upper line. 1982.2, July 27th high. 
and the supports first support the 50 days moving average at 1931 the 20 days moving average 1915 100 days no i think this is 200 days moving average at 1914 let me verify it quickly yeah this is this is a typo it's the 200 days moving average at 1914 this one this is the 200 days moving average 1910.9 august 11th low 1903.85 august 25th low 1902 july 6th low 1900 of course is a psychological level 1893 june 29th low 1884.9 august 21 low finally 1880 this is bollinger band lower band if it breaks the 1880 100% is going to test 1872 the 50 weeks moving average which by then could be maybe 1865 1866 i don't know and the 1850 the 100 weeks moving average which by then all all these averages by the way are dynamic they change on daily basis depending on the close because i'm going to do a video about moving average uh, within a couple of days and the close of the last period affects the figure okay so now it's 1872 the 50 weeks 1850 the 100 weeks when prices go down for this figure goes down as well technical indicator again i'm including an indicator section in this report as i did last week to provide insight that might eliminate the sentiment surrounding the direction of gold for the upcoming weeks as well as its potential implications leading up to the feds meeting in approximately three weeks this section aims to shed light on the prevailing market sentiment and offer some clarity amid uncertain condition my very first note is the formation of the shooting star bar on the daily chart on Friday, which is often seen as a potential reversal signal, especially when it appears after a strong market uptrend. In my opinion, definitely this is negative for gold. For the MACD indicator on the daily chart, the MACD, the signal line, and the slow line, the nine uh the exponential moving average are trending upward this indicates some short-term bullish momentum in gold however both of these indicators are still below the zero line they could easily reverse suggesting that the upward momentum is not particularly strong additionally the histogram is showing signs of weakening upward momentum which is not which is a noteworthy observation and it implies that buying pressure may be tapering off on the daily time frame let me show you this real quickly um this is the daily and this is the weekly we were talking about the daily here so they are pointing upward and the histogram momentum is fading okay now for the weekly on the weekly chart again we observe a different picture here it appears that bears are losing momentum which is often seen as a sign of potential strength for gold in the longer term let me show you the chart before going to the next slide here this is 
wenig Momentum and the MACD and the signal line may reverse upward. Considering factors like the Fed's monetary policy and geopolitical aspects like BRICS align with the broader fundamental perspective of USD weakness in the longer term. This is my opinion, by the way. On a longer term, on a year or two, I see USD weakness in the horizon. Now, economic calendar for the upcoming week appears to be relatively quiet, especially with the US markets closed on Monday because of Labor Day. Consequently, it's anticipated that we may experience a period of subdued activity with minimal volatility until we reach Wednesday, September 6th, when the ISM figures are scheduled for release at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Since, since we have only one economic indicator in this week, I thought of adding a few notes about it. So we learn what's United States ISM Services PMI. <clears throat> ISM stands for the Institute for Supply Management. And the ISM Services PMI, Purchasing Managers Index, is an important indicator used to gauge the health and performance of the services sector in the United States. The service the, th the services sector includes industries such as healthcare, finance, retail, education, and so on. Purchasing manage Managers Index, the ISM Services PMI, provides insight into the services sector's economic activity. It does so by surveying purchasing managers at various businesses and organizations in the services industry. It's reported as a numerical value, typically ranging from 0 to 100. A reading above 50 indicates expansion in the services sector. In other words, it suggests that more businesses are experiences, experiencing growth than contraction. A reading below 50 indicates contraction, implying that more businesses are facing declines in activities. Key points to consider when interpreting ISM services PMI. The trend. <coughs> trend analysis is crucial. <coughs> Consistently rising PMI values may indicate a growing and robust services sector, while falling values may signal, signal economic challenges. This is a chart. It's a 10 years chart, maybe more, uh, two five years, five years chart. And I got this from tradingeconomics.com. Um, they have all the economic calendars with explanations and um, history and charts. It's a very wealthy website. I suggest that you should take a look. Impact on markets. A higher than expected PMI can lead to increased confidence in the economy, potentially strengthening the USD currency and the stock market. That's it for now. Good luck everyone and have a wonderful week.